Well, um, <laughs> one o'clock came fast. <laughs> I, uh, I put together a, a, a tweet yesterday, but I realize not everybody's on Twitter, and I realize that the fact that I'm insisting on using the term Twitter is sort of like why I still, and will always, summer, sorry, put two spaces after a period. <laughs> okay. Because, you know, I'm old, and I don't want to change. I just don't have any, any desire to. So Twitter's Twitter, and so you still write tweets. And it was a big hill for me to climb to ever use that terminology. And I just don't think you can just change it. I don't care if Elon Musk did it. I mean, I've got a lot of respect for the guy, but <coughs> doesn't matter. Uh, they're tweets. And so I uh, mentioned on Twitter yesterday uh, that... <coughs> Yesterday turned out to be not what I expected it to be, okay? Um, I, I got back on Thursday. We had to get the RV. Now, I, I had some guy complain on, um, on Twitter about, you know, the first 15 minutes. Well, look, um, most people know that over 35-day period, February into March, we did a marathon trip, marathon trip. And we did uh, five major debates. And I taught at the seminary, barely. Uh, we, we were at a conference. Uh, I, I preached at various churches. It was, but most of you also know that I also became very ill. And for the first time in years and years and years and years, I was at an urgent care and then I was just a few days later, uh, about five days later, I'm in the ER. I even packed a little bag when I went to the ER because I figured I'm going to be here a while. Thankfully, it didn't turn out that way. Uh, I haven't gotten the bill yet. <laughs> so <coughs> up till now, I have been going, this is a great ER, man. I was in and out, but I haven't gotten the bill yet. So <laughs> we'll, we'll hold off on that last part until uh, we, we have all that figured out. But... Anyway, uh, we had some serious challenges on the, uh, on the trip. <clears throat> and uh, just, you know, for those who are new, um, I drive now. I, do, I am not afraid of flying. I flew 165,000 miles in 2019 alone. I flew, I, I ministered in Samara, Russia, Kiev, Ukraine, uh, Durban and Johannesburg, South Africa. Spent two months in London. I was in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, I was all over the world in 2019 and it looked like it was going to continue that way. And then COVID hit and everything changed and you had to wear masks. And the airlines didn't care that if I put a mask on, I'm in real danger of going into what's called supraventricular tachycardia, SVT. Uh, which is far more dangerous than COVID was, uh, turned out to be. They didn't care. They just die. Uh, you've been giving us over $100,000 a year in ticket, ticket costs. We don't care. We don't want your money. <laughs> so uh, I drive now, and I miss my overseas folks, but things are the way they are. And so um, we invested starting in 2021 uh, in a way to get me around. And... Um, we started with a little 19-foot um, self-contained unit that we rented from, um, I forget what it's called, um, but uh, I messed it up. Not, not that I crashed or anything, but I didn't realize how tall it was. And we had some issues, and I, I tried to keep all that stuff out of my mind. All we were trying to find out is, could I do this? Could I travel this way? And we decided, yes, we can do that. And so we didn't know what we were doing. Uh, we got a truck. It was a really nice truck, but it wasn't a diesel. That was a mistake. Derek Melton told us to get a diesel from the start, but we didn't. Um, and we got a 30-foot long uh, Grand Design fifth wheel. And we had to figure out, you know, you know, Rich is sitting here, and, and he, was, he was our big expert at the start because he, had, he used to pull his boat. <laughs> that, was, that was the level of our expertise. I did do some RVing as a teenager. Well, okay, but that was a that was a fully that wasn't a fifth wheel. 
No. Was that was a self-contained. That's different. So at least you knew what a, a sewer hose was, but I didn't. Um, and so we, there, was, there was a big learning curve, you know? And we didn't realize, first one, you have to put the slide out to use the restroom. Man, is that a pain when you're traveling. That is that, that design flaw, major stuff. So we've been learning a lot. And uh, last year, I came up with the idea of getting a little bit larger unit that would have bunks in the back and taking the bedroom out and making it into a studio. Um, and Rich got at it and he, uh, you all helped raise the, the funds uh, to, we, we got funds from another source, so thankful to God for that, for uh, the truck upgrade. Uh, so we have a, a powerful um, 2500 HD uh, diesel truck with a 10-speed uh, Allison transmission in it. So it's designed to pull. That's what it's, it's designed to do. <clears throat> and uh, we got a Jayco uh, Eagle, a 35-foot Jayco Eagle. And Rich got in there and he pulled out the bed and he built a platform and found a... Uh, uh, just did everything we needed to do. I did the background. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure how we're going to get that off. Um, but <laughs> you don't think that's going to come off? <laughs> we're just going we're just to hope they don't notice that part. <laughs> don't, don't ask, don't tell. Don't ask, don't tell. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're going we're gonna to do the don't ask, don't tell for all the places where the pictures come down and there's holes in the wall and everything else. Yeah, and don't ask, don't tell. Anyway, um, and so all of you, most of you probably have seen uh, what we've done from in there, and we've done a lot from in there, and it's really great, and it's su really super. But those of you who are listening, uh, at the end of the trip, as I was coughing and hacking my way through it, know that I reported that we had roof problems. And that had started um, long ago, uh, really after like the first or second trip. Uh, we, uh, we pulled it in to the place where we, you know, have tires, um, you know, the tires checked and rotated and there's just the stuff to do to make sure that it keeps running. And, um, Rich is taller than I am. And so he was out in front of the truck and he's like, is this supposed to look like that? And there were bubbles, ripples in the roof membrane that are not supposed to be there. And this is a brand new unit. And so they get up there and they go, yeah, this isn't good. Um, but Jayco will have to repair this. And so um, they went to bat for us. You know, the, the Jayco wanted us to go to one of their dealers, which was going to be months down the road. We were going to be without the unit. And this place went to bat for us. And so they got um, Jayco to use them. They sent them the material. Anyways, make a long story short, they, well... <laughs> They redid the roof, and this was the first trip with the new roof. And I'm maybe 2,000 miles into this trip. I'm 90 minutes outside of Houston, and I hear the strangest noise I've ever heard. I've never heard anything like this in all the miles I've been pulling an RV, a fifth wheel. And so I, I get to the place. I, I had to back into this spot. It wasn't a pull through. Um, and so it, were, it was right next to a lake. And so I back in and I backed it in real nicely and nice and straight. And so I took a picture and sent it to the family. Uh, it's really pretty. Got a nice lake back there, fountains. It's really nice. And so I'm sort of looking at it. And then I expanded the picture and it's like oh no and i see that the front of the roof has peeled back and so we call a mobile rv repair company there's two of them listed in the brochure of the place they send somebody out they spent hours up there and they said oh man we've we've put we've put even better material than uh and is there up there and, and uh, you know, all, all that kind of stuff and, and uh, so on and so forth. And so I got literally 100 and th 135 miles from Houston when I heard it disintegrate. The patch that we had spent nearly, um, oh, that's nice. 
the, the, the patch that we had spent nearly a thousand dollars on lasted 135 miles. It's like, and we called, we called the guys and, and Rich had told me what I, what we were going to hear. We're sorry. <laughs> Get money back? No, I don't think so. Um, you're gone now. We, we've, we've got the money and that's how it works. So I get to the next place in Texas, a real nice guy comes out and all we try to do there is just tape it. I've got some roofing tape that I carried with me and he's up there using a roller. It actually lasted like a day and a half before one side of it stayed down. Uh, and I had some real winds I was fighting. So there's at least that. But by the time I got back, I was down to wood. I mean, you could literally see the wood framing uh, on the one side. It was, it was pretty bad. And so we're like, what's going on, guys? And so they told us that they were hearing rumors that there was a particular problem with the Jacos, that they were flexing. And when you think about it, that membrane up there is glued down. And if you flex something that's glued over and over and over and over again, what does it do? It, it breaks the glue. And so I said, there's a test that, that we have to do. And if it fails, then what we're told is Jayco requires you to send the unit back to Illinois. Indiana. Indiana. It starts in I. Okay. Indiana, uh, where they're headquartered, where their manufacturing is, for a rebuild. And <clears throat> so... Monday, we did the big program here. And I was thinking, you know, I preached on Sunday. Monday, we did the big program. Tuesday, I'm going to, for the first time in um, a month and three weeks, try to take it easy. Try to start recharging the batteries a little bit. And in the meanwhile, Rich goes over to the RV place. And they have discovered that the unit is defective, um, that it is not built right. There's be no way to repair that roof at all. So we automatically know what this means. All that stuff that we've done with the, with the uh, uh, studio and the stuff that Rich built, and you know, he even got the carpet that matched the carpet that was in there, and it was, it was great. Uh, my beautiful background. I don't know what I'm going to do with my light now. You know, uh, <laughs> not sure what's going to happen to that. You know, Rich says that he's not sure what's going to happen to that. I can assure you what's going to happen to Rich if anything happens to that. It could get lost. No, it ain't getting lost. I assure you of that. I have a good idea where it's going to end up. Anyway, um, yesterday they 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 go okay. It's it's going back to Jayco, and I'm like. I'll be honest with you, I don't want to get another Jayco. I, I mean, we've, we've really had to fight with them, and I, I, I don't honestly trust almost anything that's been made since 2020. Uh, the Grand Design had issues. It was made in 2020 during COVID. This was made during uh, like 2022. Everything, we, we've been hearing horror stories from everybody in the industry about what's been going on since 2020. Well, I'm really blessed, uh, providentially we are blessed. We've developed a good relationship with this, um, this, this place um, in getting all the repairs done that we've done and they've gone to bat for us and they know we're Christians and we're gonna treat them right and they're gonna treat us right. And um, when, when we come in, they know that we understand that we're dragging these things down roads with big old potholes in them. And I do everything I can to avoid them, but sometimes there's nothing you can do. And so they're going to get banged around and stuff's going to break and stuff's going to not work right. And most of the people that come in there are blaming them for the fact that, you know, that poor little, that poor little thing you're dragging behind your truck is going to go through 20 earthquakes every day. We don't do that. We, we know there's going to be wear and tear. There's going to be stuff that happens. So they like us. And they have units on consignment or that have, they've received in some other way. And so I had gone over and looked at the fifth wheels that they had. Uh, Rich and I had gone over because we had been told of a particular brand that almost never has service calls. Uh, the guy in Texas had told me, 
I've never been called out to work on one of these. And yeah, I can see why. I mean, we are talking top, 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 top end. Most expensive type of stuff that you can get. And I can see why. Okay, yeah, that's, that's probably going to last a long time. Uh, but we went over and I, went, I met one of the sales guys and was talking to him. And, and there were two units that they had that were very, very, very similar. Floor plans, very similar. <coughs> we had decided two things. Um, we didn't want to go back to the Jayco. Um, and we needed to rethink, not having a, not, not rethink having a studio. We want to have the studio. We want to be able to do that. We want to be able to have the two cameras. We want to be able to do the, the stuff like what we do at the big screen over here, which we'll do a little later in the program. We are going to get to that. There's a reason for me taking this amount of time, folks. There really is. Um, but, uh, we also recognized that when I got sick this last time, I wasn't in a good spot to try to recuperate in that unit. I didn't have a bed. Yeah, I've got a bunk, but you can't sit up in it. You can't, you, I, I couldn't like stack pillows under my head so I could breathe. I had to sit s sitting up at the kitchen table to try to sleep because of the sinus infection. And you know, Science infections are fairly common while traveling, <laughs> especially when you're greeting people and stuff like that. Yeah. It, it. So we had sort of gone, you know, we, we'd just sort of assumed I'd always be, you know, super healthy. That may have, not have, that may have been a little bit arrogant, <laughs> really, when you think about it. It would be good to have a bedroom again. Um, so it, you need to have a bedroom and a place to put a studio. Well, both of these units uh, have that have that uh, capacity, that ability, uh, plus some other really neat things that go along with that, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, and so uh, yesterday moved fast. <laughs> yesterday moved really fast. And basically, they, they are really trying to work with us. Now, they, we, we have to take a bath on the Jayco. How could we not? Uh, I mean, it's, gonna, it's basically going to be a refurb, um, you know, it, it, they, they can't really sell it for top dollar. So we're not, not going to get a whole lot back out of it. But they've given us a, I think, an incredible price on a 2020 unit um, that I will be honest with you, makes me a little nervous. It makes me a little nervous, first of all, because it's so nice and it's um, such high quality. Um, it's been super well taken care of, but what makes me nervous is it's five and a half feet longer than the unit I've been pulling and weighs 4,000 pounds more. <laughs> um, that's not a big deal on the freeway. Okay. I mean, other than, okay, I, I'm going to be weighing that much more. Uh, so that's that much farther ahead that you need to be thinking. And by the way, to everyone out there driving on the freeways in your little teeny tiny little cars, um, when you pull in front of one of us or a semi tractor trailer and then slam on the brakes, you may die <laughs> because there's nothing, there's, there's things called the laws of physics. All right. And you can stop a whole lot faster at 2,000 pounds than I can at 22,000 pounds, okay? And we're not even talking about a fully loaded semi that's doing, you know, 60,000 pounds. Um, just don't do that. There's a reason that there's space in front of my vehicle. It's, it's called, so I don't kill anyone in there. And it just, it's just amazing the number of people in there. It's, they don't even think. They don't even, don't even Think about it twice. Anyway, every truck driver will tell you the exact same thing. It is just the constant bane of our existence. So, um, but I've never backed something up this big. It's, I'll just tell you right now, it's 40 feet long. It's 40 feet long. And our storage, our storage slot, our covered storage slot for it is 45 feet long. Okay, well, it'll fit. But I have, I've, sh I've sent rich pictures when I've gotten it in there nice and straight. And, and I would say I had about that much space between the, the, the pole, which is holding the roof up, and the side of my unit. 
and maybe this much between that and the parked vehicle on the other side. Um, so it's, it's a little bit of a challenge. Um, I'm a little nervous about it. It's not that big deal out on the road. Um, I go through the same lanes that the big truckers go through to get uh, diesel and deaf, and so that's not, that's, that's not an issue. That was an issue initially. One of the things that was really tough initially was we had a gas-powered truck, so you had to go through the auto lanes, and um, I'm not even sure how I survived that, to be honest with you, but somehow I did. So what does all that mean? Um, it means that as of right now, uh, Rich and I both have a lot of work. Uh, when we get done with this program, we're going to be looking at Hebrews chapter 1 here in a while, uh, talking about some of the stuff that came up in the Dale Tuggy debate, Doctrine of the Trinity, stuff like that. Um, when we get done with this, he and I are both jetting over, and I need to get my bike and trainer uh, out of the old unit and get it out of the way so that Rich can bring the uh, couch uh, which is supposed to go there and, and put it back in. Hey, at least, at least anybody who buys that Jayco, that couch has never been touched. <laughs> it's never been sat in. It might be a little dusty, um, but it's never, never been used. Um, we just pulled it out as soon as we got it, and that's where you put my bike. Um, but, you know, I've got to get that stuff out of there. Uh, there's all sorts of other stuff. Um, and at some point next week, I would imagine... Um, Rich and I are going to be spending a long day uh, getting everything out of the one and into the other. And um, that's in the midst of, and I'm not sure if you've thought about this or if I even mentioned it to you, um, the Easter pageant starts tonight in, uh, in Mesa, Arizona. And so my son-in-law is leading, is uh, heading up Apologia's outreach at the Easter pageant uh, in Mesa, Arizona. Uh, I want to be able to get out there with my granddaughters at least a few nights. Um, <clears throat> and we also, hopefully, I'm not sure how we're going to make this work. Uh, Rich will figure it out. Um, but either tomorrow or Friday, I, I need to talk to uh, Peter and Tobias. Um, our, our dear brothers, Peter Schultz and Tobias Raymond Schneider from Germany, uh, landed a few hours ago. Uh, here in Phoenix. And, you know, every year for a number of years, I would go visit them. Now they're returning the favor, coming to visit uh, me and Apologia. Tobias will be uh, preaching on Sunday at Apologia. So four o'clock Mountain Standard Time, which is currently Pacific Daylight Time. <laughs> anyway, uh, live on, on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, Tobias will be uh, preaching for us this coming Sunday. Uh, I would highly encourage you to uh, tune in for that. He will be preaching in English. His English is wonderful, but it does have that good German. And remember, you know who Tobias is. I didn't have time to pull it up, but we played him singing Psalm 2 in German on the program, I don't know, about a year ago or so. And he has a wonderful singing voice. I'm not going to ask him to sing on the program, but um, they will be joining us for the dividing line at some point between now and the weekend. Uh, we just have to work out exactly how to do that with the RV stuff and the outreach to the Mormons and everything else we've got going on. So, uh, Lord willing... Um, <laughs> yeah, someone just said, uh, 4K more pounds? My Miata is under 2,200. I know. Believe me. Because uh, people in a Miata will pull right in front of me and slam on the brakes. And if I don't see them and just keep on going, I won't, I'm not even sure that I would know that they were gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was that? Another, another bump in the road, a little speed bump there, and um, that would be the end of that. Um, so, yeah, I, I get it. Uh, anyhow, uh, he sent a picture, and yeah, you're parked next to a vehicle that's still not as big as my truck, so that, that gives you an idea of what we're doing out there. So we've got a lot of stuff going on, and, and I'm not even talking about the fact that we have two debates coming up. We've announced these now uh, it's on the front page at AOMN.org. Two debates of Jimmy Aiken coming up in Louisiana, and I basically have to leave in a month. So we've got to get all this done, got to get all the stuff done to the truck, uh, everything into the new unit, um, have everything ready to go. Now, I, 
I don't think we will have the studio as tweaked as we would eventually like it to be, but it should be functional. At least we'll be able to do programs. The background may just be a black background, nothing overly fancy. Um, yeah, we're not gonna have time to have anything printed between now and then. Um, but once I get back from that one, we'll we'll work on stuff for the background and I'll see what I can do with my light and, and stuff like that. Rich will try to find ways of making that not happen. But anyway, uh, oh, look, it got oh, look, it got broken. Don't worry. I know how to get it from, uh, from, uh, from Amazon again. And um, so, uh, but th this is going to be a busy month. And it's, it's like, didn't you just do 35 days and you're not even going to slow down? Um, yeah, that basically is the way it's looking right now. I don't see really much any way around that. Um, you know, we've got to take the, you got to work while the while the sun is shining uh the night's coming when no one's gonna be able to work someone said that once and i don't i'll be honest with you i don't know what state this nation is going to be in after the election i just don't know i can see all sorts of really probable situations that could make travel next to impossible um i don't know i just want to take advantage well, I can. And we are going to schedule some in-studio debates, like in here. Um, and I, I'm not saying that, that they have less worth than uh, in-person debates, but um, I prefer the in-person. I, I, I prefer live audience. Uh, I prefer questions from people that are right there rather than nameless stuff coming in on the internet with a super chat or whatever those things are called. We've never done that. Anyway, um, so yeah, I just, I do feel a, a need, uh, a, a compulsion to work hard uh, at this point in time and to get as much done as we, as we possibly can. And um, so I have, I think, yes, I do. Uh-huh. Should I? So here's, here's, the, here's the situation, folks. Um, let me put this down a little bit. I don't figure anyone's going to be able to track me down and, like, shoot me in my sleep uh, if I do this. Um, here's, we're not... We're not doing a, there's, if you go to the donation page at aomin.org, we don't have a special um, fundraising tab uh, right now like we did last year when we did the Jayco and the studio. And by the way, I, I don't know that it's going to, there's going to be a huge amount of cost as far as the studio is concerned. We've got the cables, we've got the lights, we've got the cameras, all the, expensive stuff. all the expensive stuff we've got. It's going to be little things like uh, the the stand we need that's going to be firm enough that hold the light and the cameras, this kind of stand or something like that, um, that kind of thing. So that part isn't the issue. the The issue is we're going to be getting a minimal amount, I think a fair amount given the situation and you know these these guys are these guys are taking a risk for us and I appreciate that okay there's not many places that'll do that there really aren't um, we're, we're going to be taking a bath on the Jayco they've given us a really good price on this unit but we need to raise those funds and so we're just using the travel fund uh, at aomin.org and I happen to have. A picture. It's the picture they took. Um, I can't, I can't, well, what, uh, if I do that, oh, there you go. So there it is. Um, I don't know if you can bring, oh, there it is. You can see it down there. So you can see it's, um, Rich says that you looked into it and that the uh, thing down there, the uh, hitch in the front, you said is one of the top in the industry. It's, a, it's really, a, everything we've seen on this has been um, just 
everything we've been able to look up, people have said this is this is really really good stuff. And you'll you can't tell most if if you're if you're an RVer like me, you see that it has six struts instead of four. It's only a two axle. Some of them that are that big are three axles. Um, but it's a redwood. It has three slide outs. Um, and um, for those of you that are fellow RVers, there's a little teeny bathroom right through that door. <laughs> and you might go, why? Because when you pull over along the side of the road, you don't want to be there for a long period of time, okay? You just, they're just, there's little things that can really mean a lot <laughs> in a situation like that. That pass-through storage, by, by the way, there, Keith, I think we could put that Miata, I think we could put Scott Johnson's Miata in the pass-through storage <laughs> on, on, the, on the unit there. Um, so, yes, um, there's, there's the 2020 unit that uh, I think the Lord just planted uh, at, at that place. Place. And it was the first one I walked into. It's the first one I looked at, and I said, "This has got everything that we need." Uh, it, it is a little bit older on some issues. It's it's similar to the first one we had. The grand design, as far as the refrigerator, is ele electric propane, um, and um, uh, it has a hot water tank instead of a tankless hot water system. So I'm I'm going to have to shift my thinking back a little bit. Um, but the Studio will go in the very back so you can see a slide out there That's making room for that back area Where we'll have the cameras set up and the lights and things like that now. I I know that I'm gonna have to Set things up. I have to set things up right now, too But obviously what we're gonna be looking at doing is making it so that that's the least labor-intensive thing um, Well, you know what um you t you told you told me that it had only been there what about a week? Yeah. When you look at the listing, it says more photos coming. Yeah. There were none on the inside. There were no inside pictures. Yeah. But but um, I uh, okay yeah um, I did um, yeah and it, see and unfortunately it didn't. My my signal thing uh, for the family uh, isn't pulling up the stuff that I sent out last night, unfortunately. So I, I did find some inside pictures of just the unit in general, not necessarily just this one, that I was able to send to the family. Because that is one other thing. I, I just want to mention this. One other reason for the much larger unit is I'm hoping that maybe my wife might be able to come with me, not for entire trips. Right now she's taking care of her mom. Um, you know, there's other things to take care of at home. Um, but what would be really nice is like at the end of a trip, when I'm really starting to get a little tired, it would be great to have somebody in the truck with me uh, the last couple days. And this is a unit that I can guarantee you she'd... She, um, <clears throat> It has a real bathroom, <laughs> okay? I can understand, and most women would be able to understand. You look at uh, most RV bathrooms, and they're not something that a woman would be overly um, excited about. Um, they're very, very, very small, constricted, no space for anything. That's not this. This has two sinks and lots of space and, yeah, I think my wife would be willing to do that and maybe get me home all in one piece. That's the other other aspect of this uh, that we're rather excited about. So, travel fund, um, Aiken debate coming up in uh, a little over a month. Um, there's a couple others possibly online that we're looking at. And then let me just tell you, I can't give you any details, but I have made the decision to start doing some very serious research and reading in a brand new area that we have not gotten into in the past. And I'm really hoping to set up a major debate this fall. I'm not exactly sure where yet. I would need to have, we would need to have a decent sized place. And I'm thinking about, I was contacted today 
about speaking at a very large conference in 2025. And the sponsoring church, I think, would be just ideal for this. But it'd be a lot of study on my part, hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of study on my part. But again, I really think that this is how we'll be able to get all that stuff done. Uh, Scott Johnson, it doesn't yet, but it's ready for it. <laughs> I'll just let you figure that out from Twitter. It, 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 it has all the connections. All, it's, all we need to do is put them in there, and we will do that. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Um, okay, so travel fund, if you go to the donate page, there's the general fund, and we you know, still need stuff in the general fund. <laughs> Got to keep the lights on. Uh, but then if you drop that down, travel fund, uh, that's how we'll be covering all of this, um, all this stuff and uh, making it work. Um, you know, I I was not expecting this at all when I pulled out on this last trip. Got a brand new roof. All right, Whew, yeah, this is this is great. You know, this is wonderful. I never saw this coming, and I never want to hear that sound again either. Um, but I'll know what it is if I hear it. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. So, all right. So, uh, hit the travel fund. Let us know you support us in doing the debates. And this is how we do them now. Uh, that's just, just the way it is. I've, I've explained why. And, and um, uh, you know, some people go, no, nah, not going to support that. Okay, that's fine. That's cool. But uh, those who um, want to see us continue to do these types of things, um, uh, we need your assistance and uh, be very appreciative of it. So what I want to cover in the last uh, amount of time we have here, we haven't talked a lot about it, and I, I don't think I mentioned, or I may have mentioned in passing, uh, Dale Tuggy is interested in doing um, the prologue of John, a debate on the prologue of John. Uh, we're having some conversation. Uh, we both know that in person is a little bit better than online, but hey, um, this would be a good way to do it too. And I, I do want to try to start arranging some debates utilizing this type of thing. I, I wanted to do that in the studio, too, and we will do that. I, I really, really do want to schedule a serious debate while I'm on the road uh, using uh, this stuff that God has given to us. Um, so, uh, haven't said much about the, the debate um, I did see some debate review. Uh, I guess even Dale Tuggy, Dale Tuggy is getting into doing, having guests on to do debate reviews. <laughs> I guess that's what you guys start doing now or something. I, I don't know. But um, if you have watched it, I would be interested. I, I would really be, I, I wish there was some way to like take a poll of the audience. I, I suppose we could on Twitter. <laughs> um, we, we probably, if we had somebody running the Twitter feed, we, we probably could put a poll up and do a, get an instant response uh, from everybody uh, watching on Twitter or something like that. But um, I would be interested in what most people felt about the interaction that took place and the arguments because I knew exactly what was going to happen. I knew exactly what was going to happen. Um, I told people exactly what was going to happen. And, well, that, that, that wasn't magical. We had to exchange our opening statements. He required that. And he probably would for the John 1-1 one, one debate, too. Um, so I knew, but, but even before we exchanged opening statements, I knew what was going to happen. Dale Tuggy has a, sp a specific approach. I suppose people would say, so do I, but... Um, mine is a primarily exegetical approach. His is a primarily, it, the Bible can't mean these things because of these issues. Uh, G, the, you can't be a God-man because of certain philosophical issues. Okay, and, and so I knew that that's pretty much what we could be getting, and, and it was for his opening statement. Then in his rebuttal, he started to try to address the text that I had presented in my opening, though... All you can do, if you, don't, if you don't go after those texts in your opening, which was, what, 25? I think it was 25 minutes long. The rebuttals, I think, were only 10. 
So when you think about it, how can you give almost any meaningfully deep um, exegetical response to multiple texts when you only have 10 minutes? I, it, it's just not possible to do. And so when I'd seen the opening, I was sort of like, oh, this is, okay. Of the texts I presented, and there were many, many more we could have gotten into, I did get into, um, I, I did eventually get into, in the rebuttal period, because uh, he mentioned the I am sayings of Jesus, I got into some of that, because that's directly relevant to who Yahweh is and, and, and things like that. But I felt that the weakest, by far the weakest, argumentation that he presented was in, re, in re, response to Hebrews chapter 1. And so let's, uh, let's take a look uh, at the text. Wet the whistle a little bit there. Rich has built a really cool little place. I can put my water bottle in here. Very impressive. Of course, if the thing ever falls apart on air, we will know exactly who to blame. And, and it won't be me. <laughs> so here's, uh, I suppose we could call it the prologue of Hebrews um, in, a, in a sense. But, um, you know, yeah, hold on. Oh, that's going to drive you crazy. Uh, let's go ahead and make it a little bit easier for folks to see. Or a little bit easier for me to see. I suppose we can go ahead and blame me if we want to. Blow the fonts up a little bit. So we have, at the beginning of Hebrews, the beginning of the demonstration of the supremacy of Christ. Because remember, what's, what is this all about? Hebrews is about the fact that there's nothing to go back to. There's nothing to go back to. Uh, there's great pressure being put upon the Hebrew Christians to go back to worship in the temple, to curse Christ, uh, you've joined a cult, all this kind of stuff. And the argument of Hebrews is there's nothing to go back to. And so the first demonstration of that, Hebrews chapter 1, has numerous references to the deity of Christ. So uh, he is the radiance, his glory, the exact representation of his nature, upholds all things by the word of his power, when he had made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much better than the angels, as he has inherited a more excellent name than them. And what name might that be? Well, we we're going to find out here. Um, and you'll notice the uh, Nessian 28th edition over here in the Greek puts this in poetic form. The uh, NASB, which I forgot to switch over to the LSB because the default hasn't been changed, uh, the NASB does not put it in that. I, I would be interested in knowing what the LSB does with it, but we can't worry about that right now. So then we have um, four, to which of the angels did he ever say? So now, now what you're going to be getting, the NASB uses the blocks, the block letters. The Nessialen uses the italicized Greek letters. Four citations from the Old Testament, specifically from the Greek Septuagint. And says, for to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Um, and so now we're, we're getting these Old Testament citations, and we're getting introductions. So, so for to which of the angels did he ever say? So there's the introduction, and then you've got the quotation. And then notice here, and again, so he doesn't, he, he doesn't have to repeat everything he said up here. He doesn't have to say, and to which of other angels did he again say, or something like that. And again is all you need to then introduce the next citation. I will be a father to him. He shall be a son to me. So these are rhetorical questions. He never said these things to angels. So whoever this is, is above angels. And what did, what's the gradation of beings that the Bible gives? Not, not other religions and not uh, intertestamental people and all the rest of that stuff, but the Bible, Jesus, for example, no man knows the day or the hour, angels, not even the Son, but the Father, right? So you get men, angels, deity. 
And so if he's above the angels, then you can't have an angel Christology here. And so no angel has ever heard God say to him, you are my son, I'll be a father to him, he shall be a son to me. So you have this assertion being made, and this is how you introduce it. And again, and then you have the quotation. Now, I almost took the time, but ran out of time. I was going to pull up Vatican or Society Attic or something like that. We can put it up there. Italics, block, all this stuff is editorial. The originals don't have that kind of stuff in it. I get that. Um, but this is very helpful in understanding what's going on. And you'd have to be able to argue against this. What would and again be if it's not functioning as, well, you got one citation here, and again, here's the next citation. That's, that's how it's functioning. Um, and we're going to find out here in a moment that's rather important. Verse 6, and when he again brings the firstborn into the world, the prototokos, right here, prototokon in the accusative, when he again brings firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship. So the, all the angels of God are worshiping him. He can't be one of the angels of God if he's being worshipped by all the angels of God. Then, because then he'd be worshiping himself. Uh, that, that did come up in Revelation chapter uh, 5. Uh, we're not doing that today, but uh, that's where it comes from. And so, and he says, then you have a quotation. And then he, verse 8 I'm sorry, verse 7, and of the angels, he says, and so here's another, he's, so here's a he says here, I'm not marking it yet because we're not down to the section we need to be, but here's, he says, quotation, and indeed to what, in, he says, then quotation. So he's being, he's being consistent here, uh, who makes his angels winds, his ministers a flame of fire, and so we, we have introduction, then citation, introduction, then citation. So, and this is where it gets important, verse 8. Pros, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let me see here. Eh, yeah, I guess I will. I guess I sort of need to, actually. Uh, this is going to be useless anyplace else. So, To the Son, prostatan huion, but of the Son, he says, and now we have entire quotation, your throne, your throne, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses and others will argue, well, that actually should be God is your throne uh, forever and ever, uh, the righteous scepter, the scepter of his kingdom. Um, you can make a very strong argument for this understanding in the context. It's not directly relevant to what we're talking about here. What is relevant here is here's another introductory. Yes, go away. Here's another introductory phrase, but to the Son, and then here's the citation. And the citation goes from verses 8 and 9. You have loved righteousness, hated lawlessness. Uh, therefore, God has christened, anointed Christ. That's where the term Christ comes from. Um, God has anointed you uh, with the oil of gladness above your companions. And so here's the introduction. And you can still see it down here. Verse 10, I'm going to pull it up here. And, and. Now, what is... Why is that relevant? Well, you'll see here. So you've got the citation. And it's down here, uh, over here. It hasn't gone up because there's still a little bit of, chapter, of verse 9 there. And, and, you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth. And. So up above we had, but to the sun, he says. And then you just have this little word, and. Just Hanging out there? No. This, there, is no there is no and in Psalm 102.25, which is quoting. So this and has to be explained. And 
the vast majority of interpreters all recognize the same thing. This is the introduction to verse 10, but it's being drawn from back in verse 8, pros de ton huion, to the sun up here, and then here's the and. And this is also being said to the sun. And what is being said to the sun is the citation from Psalm 102, 25, 27. You, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens the works of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all become old like a garment. Like a mantle, you will roll them up, and, they sh and like a garment, they shall be changed. Um, but your years never end, and you shall continue on, is what it says down there. Now, the point is this. Uh, verse 12, then, verses 10, 11, and 12, quotation of Psalm 102, and then verse 13 goes straight back to what? But to which of the angels has it ever been said, sit at my right hand until I make it your enemies for stool for your feet? The most, the most central Christological text from Psalm 110 uh, in the New Testament. So there's been no break. Everything here is about the supremacy of Christ. He's above the angels. Um, and the Psalm 102 citation is plainly and clearly being applied to the Son. The, the context does not change. Verse 13, but to which of the angels? So the contrast again the angels, which we already saw above, is continued. Very, very plain, very, very clear. Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? So again, the Son is of a different order than the created angels are. Now, why is any of this important? Well, how did Dale Tuggy try to get around this text? Evidently, he recognizes uh, he, he recognizes that if this is about the Son, if you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the works of your hands, they will perish, but you remain. This is about Yahweh. And this is about Yahweh's unchanging nature. So if this is addressed to the Son, in the very words that were applied to Yahweh, the debate's over. And so what did he do? Well, I think a lot of people may have not seen, you know, hadn't looked at this before, didn't know exactly why he was saying what he was saying. But what he says is that verses 10 through 12 are not about the Son. That leaves this word and just hanging out there, no explanation. Why is, it, why is it there? Up above, it had continued the introductory um, scheme. So I say this, then I have a quote, and, then I say a quote. Same thing's going on here. Verse 8 of the sun, he says, 8 and 9, and verses 10, 11, 12. They're all about the sun. That's the consistent way of reading Hebrews 1. But Unitarians don't believe what Hebrews 1 is actually teaching. And so, verses 10, 11, and 12 are all of a sudden turned into something else. Um, now, I, I had mentioned at one point, um, Anthony Buzzard tries to say that what this is actually about, it goes into chapter 2, and in chapter 2, um, it's, a, it's a new creation, and it, it's, it's about redemption, and stuff like that. The chapter 2 goes a completely different direction. It, 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 it's actually a good chapter division, because the subject changes. The subject never changes here. This is all one continuous argument. And verses 10, 11, and 12 are directly addressed to the Son. And if that's the case, then this is the Son being identified as Yahweh. 
Now, we don't have one, one advantage uh, that you would have, and you need to know this. I wonder. Um, it would probably take too long to pull it up, actually. Um, but oh, maybe not. Let me look real quick and see if, um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, what do they call that now? I don't want the Wikipedia. I don't want Facebook. Uh, well, this is weird. You try to you try to just bring up there it is jw.org. Wow, jw.org is like the tenth thing you hit when <coughs> when you search for when you search for jw.org. I it used to be Watchtower. I forget what they did. Um, you know, I might be able to do this. Um, yeah, okay, accept, accept, accept. Fine. Uh, 2013 edition. Uh, oh, they've got a study edition now. I wasn't aware of that. That's eh, probably just a big brown one updated. I'm trying to bring up um, Hebrews 1, verse 10. Let's see what it's got. Yep. Okay, it's got marginal references. Maybe this will work. Yep, look at that. <laughs> All right, let me let me pull accordance down here, and let's put the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society on the screen. And here is um, New World Translation. And at the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, the heavens will work of your hands; they will perish, so on and so forth. And this is in the uh, printed versions as well. It will be the little teeny tiny note. It's with the references. Sometimes it's center. It's normally center column. Sometimes it's bottom of the page, depending on which printing. But notice Hebrews one. Well, at least one twelve. And I, I guess if you marginal references here, yeah, Hebrews one twelve is the last one. What what reference do they give you? Psalm one hundred two twenty five to twenty seven. So when the Jehovah's Witnesses come to your door, and you might want to get into this conversation with them, their Bible will actually have the reference right there telling them the citation we're reading is from Psalm 102. So that's why I say, when you're speaking to Jehovah's Witnesses, get them to read Psalm 102 first from the New World Translation and have them back up a few verses where the last occurrence of Yahweh is so that they're... It'll, it'll say Jehovah in their version, obviously. Um, and ask them, who is this about? Who is it that never changes? Who is it that created the world by himself? Who is it that does not uh, age and, and, and all the rest of these things? Jehovah, 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 Jehovah. Then when you take them to Psalm 102, make sure to read verse 8. Um, also, he says about the angels, quote, 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 quote. And, quote, 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 quote. So even the way that the NWT punctuates um, tells you that verses 10 and following are being applied to the Son. You get down to verse 12. You say, what's that from? And there's the reference, Psalm 102, 25 to 27. You told me Psalm 102, 25 to 27 is about Yahweh. It's about Jehovah. It's about Jehovah's unchanging nature. And yet the writer of the Hebrews applies it to the Son. Now, you don't have the same thing with a Unitarian that doesn't have a New World Translation. And did you catch what Dr. Tuck, he, he left the poor Jehovah's Witnesses standing on the doorstep. He, he, I don't, was, it, was it during the closings or was it during the Q&A? I think it was during the Q&A he made some kind of statement about the anti-intellectual Jehovah's Witnesses and blah, blah, blah. I mean, he let him have it. He, he, he took a shot at him. Uh, I think maybe someone maybe mentioned the NWT during a Q&A a question. I don't, yeah, I think that's what it was, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like, I bet you they've X'd him off their 
their list too. They didn't come to my house, they didn't come to his house. But yeah, so, so there you go. Um, you, it's a good, good reference to use. A lot of people have used it very effectively in, um, in talking to Jehovah's Witnesses. So I wanted to go through that <coughs> just simply to respond to that very unique argument that he made um, so that you're aware of what that is. We're out of time. Rich and I have to go do stuff. Um, and sweat and do things like that. It's going to be fun, uh, but it's going to make it possible for us to get to Louisiana next month for the, uh, the, the debates down there. By the way, if you're down that area, don't put it off too long. There's only so many seats in the church, so you need to get tickets. Uh, they're not expensive or anything. The, the tickets are just simply so that you don't have 500 people standing outside rioting because they can't get in. That's, that's the fundamental reason for that. Um, but the link is at aomin.org, right on the front page. Um, there's a graphic there. Click on it. It takes you right to the website the church has put up. And uh, don't put that off because uh, I had a lot of people contacting me. I can't get into the debates. And it's like, well, sorry. Uh, we've been telling everybody about them for a long time. All right. Uh, the travel fund is at aomin.org. That link is at aomin.org. Thanks for watching the program. We'll see you next time. God bless.